bedroom yet. Aw, oh, stupid quarantine. I know it's hard, sweetheart, but we just have to be patient. This happens to lots of people with important jobs like your father's. Okay, I won't go in. I'll just say hi. Dad? Dad, did you fall asleep? Hey, Jimmy, is that you out there, sport? Yeah, it's me. Uh, Jimmy, uh, I'm hungry. Okay, Dad, I'll go tell Godrich to make you something. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, why don't you come in, son? Uh, pay your old man a visit. I'm not supposed to get too close yet, remember? Now, James, if your father says it's okay, then it's okay. Now, you come in here. Uh, I don't know. You sure? Positive. You come and give your dad a big hug. Now, Jimmy. Well, all right. If you say it's okay. There he is. There's my boy. so thin I can see your bones. And you've lost all your hair, too. You look almost like a skeleton. Oh, so sorry, Jimmy. But Daddy's hungry. So very, very hungry. Come closer, son. Come to Daddy. What? No, Dad, no! the radiation, a side effect of the medication? Or was it greed that caused this carnivorous transformation? We may never know. Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling tales from the West Virginia Hills. Not all creatures are of the land. Some stalk the skies. One such boogeyman has been reported for generations by mystified West Virginians. Its name remains the same, but accounts and speculation about its nature vary wildly. Some say man, others say beast, some say devil, others say angel. Tonight's tale, The Mothman Comet, begins in Morgantown Municipal Hospital. We join young Mary Scarberry's bedside as she wakes, looking a little worse for wear. Nurse? N Nurse Handy? Are you there? Right here, my sherry. And how are you feeling? Perhaps another steam pack will end. Oh, is she awake? There she is. I heard her voice. How's my brave little girl? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I'm doing okay. Oh, we've been worried sick. Oh, you gave us such a fright. Uh, howdy, folks. Awful sorry to disturb you at this hour. Mary, this is Sheriff Johnson. He just wants to ask a few questions. Well, from what I hear, you're downright lucky to be alive, Miss Mary. You kids went through quite an ordeal. Steve and Betty, are they okay? Uh... Let's just have a little chat first, Mary. Now, do you remember how you came to be on the Fayetteville Railroad Bridge yesterday? Well, going to the bridge was really Buddy's idea. Come on, Mary. Don't whip out. Every kid's got to do it sometimes. But, Buddy, you know I'm plumb scared of hot. How far you reckon that drop is, Steve? My daddy says a thousand feet. I heard it's two thousand feet. Plenty of time to say last words and final prayers before you hit the river. Stop teasing me! I told y'all I'm nervous enough already. 
Come on. Quit your stalling. Here, watch me. There's nothing to it. Money, be careful. The last one across is round egg. Here goes. Atta girl. Come on. Slow down. I'm trying to take my time. You're doing swell, Mary. I don't know. I don't think I can go any further. You can't chicken out now. Just put one foot in front of the other. Hey, y'all. Look. Uh, up in the sky. Dang. What is that? It's too big to be a bird. Wait. I know what it is. See how its eyes are glowing red? It's the moth man. <laughs> With a terrible winged creature coming for them, what will happen to these adventurous kids trapped in such a precarious position? Tune in next time for the thrilling conclusion of The Mothman Cometh. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of The Mothman Cometh. When last we left off, three mischievous kids were crossing a railroad bridge when they were beset on by a terrible beast swooping down from the skies. It's flying right toward us! Yeah! Oh, that was close! Dear Mary, get off that bridge! Plane coming! The train! Grandma says that the moth man's a sign of bad things. I bet that means the train's gonna derail. Well, maybe the bad thing is the train's squashing us like Jumbo. What are we gonna do? We can't jump. And it's too late to run. The train's almost here. Look out! That thing's coming back. Chapter of 
tales from the West Virginia hills. Welcome back, dear listeners. It's time once again to put aside all you think you know, all you believe to be true. Time to open your mind to the strange, bizarre, and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Tonight's episode, The Beast of Grafton, is brought to you by Dandy Boy Apples. Apples so good, they never go bad. And remember, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's Dandy Boy Apples. Fresh, delicious, and dandy every time. Pick up a box today. Our tale begins in the rural hills near Grafton, where locals have reported a strange creature lurking in the woods. Robbie Cockrell and Peggy Mansfield were out on a date, celebrating Peggy's birthday. A full moon loomed large as they drove. Robbie, you're going too fast. Don't worry. This nuclear roadster handles like a dream. Where are you taking me anyway? I told you, it's a birthday surprise. Way out here in the woods? There's nothing this far out of Grafton, except that hospital by the river. Wait. I bet we're going to that new drive-in over in Clarksburg, right? Just so you can show off your slick new hot rod. Ah, come on. Don't be like that, Peggy. I just thought the drive-in would be romantic. Oh, Robbie. Robbie, look out! Peggy? Are you okay? Peggy? Yeah. I'm okay, I think. What happened? There was a huge boulder in the middle of the road. I tried to warn you, but it was too late. Look, look, in the road. There's nothing there. How could that be? I saw it plain as day in the headlights. And just look at the front end. It smashed right in. I mean, it, it didn't just get up and walk away. What was that? Probably just a wolf. Didn't sound like a wolf to me. There it is again. Whatever it is, it sounds like it's coming this way. Look, those lights by the river. That must be the hospital. We can get help there. Come on. Ow, my foot. I think I heard it in the accident. Look, I'm bleeding. Everything's going to be okay. Uh, here, lean against me. There you go. Will our two lovers survive such a harrowing ordeal? Tune in next time for the thrilling conclusion of The Beast of Grafton. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of The Beast of Grafton. When last we left off, two teenagers... Robbie Cockrell and Peggy Mansfield were running for their lives after a harrowing car accident, trying to escape a frightening creature stalking them. See? You're doing great. Just like when we won that three-legged race in the park. We're almost to the hospital. Sounds great. 
crazy, but I hit it with my car and... Ah, uh -huh, I see. Uh, it's just you two? Yes, it's just us. Oh, won't you help us, Doctor, please? Of course we'll take care of you, my dear. Uh, do come in, come in. See, I told you everything was going to be okay, Peggy. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. 
You know, it was a carny who coined the phrase, there's a sucker born every minute. Dad. Anyway, when I didn't have enough tickets, I tried sneaking in. You did not. Did so. Sorry, Mr. H. <laughs> it's okay, Teddy. Your secret's safe with me. Gee, thanks. So, I went around the back, looking for a place to sneak under the tent, and overheard two workers say the smelly gaster escaped. Escaped? You're kidding! All right, all right. I, I, I hate to break it to you, boys, but that's just a publicity stunt to stir up intrigue. Those men were scared stiff. What should we do, Dad? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going home. If you two want to stay longer, then so be it. But what about the Snally Gaster? <laughs> like I said, no such thing. Just don't dawdle too long, understand? They're closing soon. Okay, Dad. You think he's right about it being fake? I don't know. Well, the only thing I have enough for is the fun house. Want to go? Same here. Come on, it's this way. Something is loose at the carnival. But is it a menacing beast? Or just a cock and bull hoax? Tune in next time for the thrilling conclusion of Sideshow Snallygaster. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of Sideshow Snallygaster. When last we left off, two boys, Billy and Teddy, were headed toward the fun house trying to shake off the upsetting rumor that a dangerous beast escaped its cage. Wow, this fun house is bonkers. It's the Hall of Mirrors. Get a load of me. My body looks so big and fat in the reflection. And this mirror makes me look tall and thin. Whoa. Yes, it's time for more thrilling 
tales from the West Virginia hills. Tonight's episode, Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods, is brought to you by Sugar Bombs, the breakfast cereal with explosive great taste and 100% of the recommended daily allowance of sugar. Get your morning started right with Sugar Bombs. Our tale begins on a fateful night when a young pioneer scout, Red Fisher, finds himself in quite the predicament, having taken a spill and fallen into a dark place. Where am I? Jack? Biff? Mr. Bailey? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Who's there? I, I can't see you. Me? My name's Sally. What's yours? Fred. Are you okay, Fred? I think so. My head's a little woozy. Must have hit it when I fell. Oh, no. Did you get lost, too? Well, sort of. What I mean is that I was camping with my scout troop by the lake near Flatwoods. There were these lights kind of dancing in the sky. Me? I guess. Anyway. We heard some weird noises, and the guy's double dog dared me to go look, so I did. All by yourself? You're really brave. Shucks. Thanks. I followed the noises to an entrance of an old mine. It smelled awful there, like rotten eggs, but worse. Suddenly, there was this bright light shining down on me. I was super scared and ran to the mine to hide, but everything felt strange. Like, my feet weren't even touching the ground. Everything went black, and I woke up here in the dark. That'll happen to me, too. We'll just do what my dad says. When you stray to lost your foot, do what's best and stay put. They said they'd bring him soon. There are other people here? A very good question, indeed. Tune in next time to find out the answer in the chilling conclusion of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. In the last episode, Pioneer Scout Fred Fisher met a curious girl named Sally while hiding in the dark. But as it turned out, they weren't alone. There are other people here? Yeah, they probably just want to get more food. They'll be back soon enough. You can wait with me, and they'll give you food too. You just have to do what they want. What do you mean? When they want to play games with you. Games? What kind of games? I'm still learning the rules. Mostly, they're kind of boring, and only hurt when they use the needles. Needles? Yeah, you know, like at the doctor. This doesn't sound like any game I know. It sounds downright awful, and these people sound really bad. We have to get out of here. No, no. Stay put. Stay put. Stay put. Stay put. Okay, okay. Stop screaming. Ah, the light. It's so bright. That's where they come in to bring food when it's time to play. <gasps> Sally, what's that helmet thing you're wearing? It looks like it's screwed into your head. search high and low for a missing girl named Sally, whom he swears he met. 
So I leave it to you to decide, dear listeners. Was this simply the wild imagination of a frightened boy lost in the woods? Or was Fred Fisher, in fact, abducted by brainwashing aliens from outer space? Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. <laughs> <laughs>